Phosphatidyl serine. <clears throat> Uh, brain food or snake oil? Expensive urine. Which is it? <clears throat> or is it both? Probably not both. Phosphatidylserine. Uh, first for, you, for you, the uh, biochemistry geeks out there, this is a glycerin molecule right here. And you can tell that phosphatidylserine has a fatty acid here, a fatty acid chain here, and serine here. So this is what we call um, hydrophilic and this is what we call lipophilic. So what happens is this part of the molecule does very well with water and this does well with um, lipids. Now who cares? Well we all do. It actually makes a big, it's a big deal for us. Um, and here's why. It's used in cell membrane signaling, signaling, and I'll show you how that uh, hydrophilia and lipophilia has to do with that in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> it has to do with uh, cell signaling for cell apoptosis, which means cell death. So <clears throat> these are very important in terms of death of our neurons, the, our brain cells. So that's why it's important. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it in just a minute. Let me uh, first introduce myself. It's uh, Dr. Ford Brewer, PrevMed, uh, stands for Preventive Medicine, heart, heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability, Dementia Prevention. Um, <clears throat> today we're talking about uh, phosphatidylserine. Now I mentioned that the uh, what sounded like a whole lot of biochemistry geekonomics actually turns out to be very, very practical. If you look at the cell and the cell membrane, the cell membrane for the neurons, our brain cells, as well as other cells, is made up mostly of uh, lipids, fatty acid layers, two fatty acid layers, in fact. Uh, normally on a, um, a, a healthy cell, you'll see um, phosphatidylserine. And in fact, you'll see phosphatidylserine in... Uh, most places, most tissues of our body, uh, you'll see that um, one of the bigger sources for phosphatidylserine is uh, animal products um, because of that reason. Well, again, we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But <clears throat> in terms of signaling, so you see here, if the red, the red stands for um, phosphatidylserine molecules, and in this normal healthy cell, healthy neuron, you have very few phosphatidylserine molecules out on the outer layer of that lipo, uh, lipophilic membrane, mostly on the inside. Now, the, the signaling occurs when you start getting uh, cell death, you, an unhealthy cell, you'll start getting uh, this phosphatidylserine going to the outer layer. Again, that creates the signaling, and then that starts some... Uh, mechanism for cleaning up a dead cell. Now I mentioned the big sources for phosphatidylserine. In fact, I'm going to have to hold this up close here. Bovine brain, 713. Um, this is the uh, content in uh, milligrams of 100 grams of that tissue. As you see, nothing else is anywhere near that. So the original source for phosphatidylserine, uh, the most concentrated source, was um, beef brains, uh, cow brains. And yes, people did used to eat that. As you look down the rest of the list, again, as I said, very heavily populated with animal products. So how about vegans and, and vegetarians? Can they get phosphatidylserine? Well, here, look. White beans are an acceptable source. So yes, vegans can, but it's uh, not, uh, doesn't jump out at you like it, uh, like the, a, uh, a meat eater's diet. So <clears throat> just to add a little uh, picture and clarity to this, again, sources of, uh, of phosphatidylserine and especially 
uh, that. That's animal. That's a cow's brain. And yes, people ate that. Or still do. Um, obviously, there's been a huge decrease in uh, eating of cow brains associated with um, mad cow disease. <clears throat> I don't eat cow brains. Um, the uh, white beans. And then, of course, uh, most people these days, when they are focused on getting phosphatidylserine, they get it in a bottle, in a pill. Most of the pills are made from vegetarian sources like uh, soybean. Uh, there, are, there is some argument about whether soy phosphatidylserine is uh, adequate. That, um, that debate, I think, is uh, the jury's still out on that. Now, <clears throat> speaking of the jury being out, what's the big, uh, is phosphatidylserine, is it helpful or not? Well, here's what the FDA says. Interestingly enough, the FDA does allow uh, makers of phosphatidylserine to say, consumption may reduce the risk of cognitive dysfunction in the elderly. Now it is, uh, so that's actually a fairly strong statement to be coming from the FDA. Now, <clears throat> as you go deeper, the FDA does have a lot of qualifiers and uh, clarifications around it. For example, uh, the consumption of phosphatidylserine may be, uh, reduce the risk of dementia. Very limited and very preliminary scientific research suggests that. Um, The FDA concludes there is little scientific evidence to support this claim. So, <clears throat> on the one hand, the FDA is saying there may be some information, some support. And uh, on the other hand, they're saying it's not that clear. I went through and looked um, at some more of the data, and here's my perspective. It's the... It, it's uh, probably not, for example, not as strong as you see with berberine or uh, maybe even cinnamon or uh, gymnema with blood sugar. Uh, but there is some data. Um, it, it comes to, uh, to a common uh, decision point that you have with a lot of supplements, and that is the data is uh, maybe not that strong. Uh, the, or maybe there's fairly good data, but the impact is not that strong. Either way, um, is it worth giving up uh, other medications? Well, in this case, there are no good medications. You, you talk about Aricept for, uh, for dementia. It's not a great medication. There's just nothing out there right now. So um, I think it's clearly a, a defensible case if you know, if you know the, uh, the literature, you know that it's no guarantee and you still want to get phosphatidylserine, I think it's clearly a defensible decision. Thank you very much.